Let's explore some key concepts in ProRaster. I'm running ProRaster Premium. So ProRaster creates and edits and saves and opens MRD files, which are algorithm files. So let's open one up. The structure of the algorithm is represented in this tree. And on the right hand side, we have a preview of the algorithm being rendered. In the middle, we have property pages which are associated with the item that you select on the tree on the left hand side. So you can see that an algorithm is composed of uh, algorithm properties as well as one or more layers. Each layer has its own properties and inside a layer there are one or more components and each component has its own properties. So let's take a look at this file for this algorithm. As you can see, it's just XML. So you can open it in any text editor. So here's our algorithm. It has algorithm properties. It has layers. And inside layers, there are properties. There are components inside uh, a layer. And each component will have properties. And even though there are a lot of uh, um, editable items in algorithms and layers and components, the only things that you'll see in this XML file are the things that you've actually changed from their default settings. Let's take a closer look at algorithms, layers and components. So to see the algorithm properties, you click on the algorithm at the top of the tree. Algorithm have some properties that are specific to the algorithm and then they have other properties which simply override other settings in layers and uh, in components. So for example we have here the coordinate system. Now the coordinate system default is the coordinate system that the algorithm has um, uh, acquired from layer and component data which themselves are acquired from rasters. So it knows that it's in latitude and longitude coordinate system. I can override that here with this setting and change it to something else, like for example here, one from projections of the world. There are uh, in interpolation settings. These override settings in layers and components. Um, they're background color settings. These of course are specific to algorithms and blending rules, which of course are also specific to algorithms. It has a shadow property page, so this allows you to change the hill shading and override it in all the layers and components uh, in the algorithm. In this algorithm we have three layers. Now layers are rendered um, using a painter's algorithm from bottom to top and the ones that are rendered first may then be overprinted by the ones that are rendered later. So in this algorithm, bathymetry would be rendered first, it then might be overprinted by the terrain, and then finally Greenland is rendered on top. So if we look at a layer, um, similar kind of thing to algorithms, you have override, so here's the coordinate system override, uh, and then you have a few uh, specific colour properties. So here's our colour interpolation override and a few other properties like opacity for the layer. Now let's take a look at components. So these layers are all lookup table type layers. We don't have any RGB or image layers in this particular algorithm. So we have a colour component Whereas in an RGB layer, we would have red, green, and blue components. And in an image layer, we would have an image component. However, they're all similar. So let's look at the color component. The most important is the component page. So here we choose the raster source uh, for this component. And we have to select the field and select the band that we want uh, uh, to be used by that component. You can also select the time range. You, have, you can select the data conditioning filter. And again, here's the coordinate system. For a color component, 
we also have to specify the data color transform and the color table. And so that's all specified here. And there are some other more advanced options here as well. If we look at the intensity component, so on the component page, it's exactly the same as color. In other words, we have to choose a raster source and field and band. There aren't very many color properties on an intensity or hill shading component, but it does have this uh, hill shading control um, where you can set the direction of the, the sun and um, enable uh, the specular highlight and so forth. Note that um, whenever you change anything in here, in one of these property pages, it's immediately reflected in the preview on the right. One of the key concepts in ProRaster is the idea of reusable resources. So these are resource objects that you create and then save, and they're saved into uh, certain files on your C drive. And then you can use them in any algorithm that you create thereafter. And those reu reusable resources are edited via these four uh, dialogues down here. So let's go into the raster source editor. So a raster source um, is uh, one or more raster files. Often it will just be one, but it might be multiple files if you have uh, multiple images, for example, tiled images. So uh, whenever you um, create an algorithm, all your components have to be linked to raster sources. So in the editor, you can uh, add a new raster source, then browse to the raster that you want to add into that raster source or multiple rasters. And then there are a whole bunch of options for doing other things like previewing it, for example, validating and cleaning, and there are some advanced options as well. <coughs> The data conditioning editor creates um, data conditioning filters. Uh, and you can see in the algorithm that for each component, you can select a data conditioning filter. So this filter is applied to the raster data before it gets rendered. And you can use it to filter out bad values or certain data ranges and so forth. So it's a similar concept. You'd add a new data conditioning object. Um, you have to give it. Um, a unique name. All resources must have a unique name because every single one um, must be uniquely identifiable. Um, so then you would um, say, for example, add in a range of minus 909 uh, to 0. So this filter would reject all values between minus 99999 and 0. Hit OK, and then that gets saved. You can then select that object in your algorithm if you wish. The Data Transform Editor um, allows you to create transformations from data uh, to color. And these are used in the lookup table color layer and in the red, green, blue, blue color layers. Um, although this is a fairly advanced uh, dialogue uh, and there is already a significant amount of um, capability built into the component dialog itself. So a lot of the transforms that you'll use, probably 99% that you'll ever use, uh, are in here and, uh, and can be selected from here. Uh, finally, you have the color table editor. So this allows you to um, uh, see the color tables that you've got in your system. So for example, we have all these uh, built-in ramps that uh, ship with ProRaster or built-in color tables that ship with ProRaster and color maps that ship with ProRaster. And then you can um, create color tables yourself or you can link to um, directories which have color tables that have been shipped from some other application like MapInfo, for example. And from in here, you can copy color tables um, and edit color tables and, um, and do all that maintenance that you require. Once you've uh, created those color tables, you'll then be able to select them from 
uh, from uh, the component. So for example, we can choose some other color table. As you build your algorithm, a preview of the algorithm will be displayed in the preview map window on the right hand side. Uh, in this map window, you can use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and use the left mouse button to click and drag and pan about, or you can do both at the same time. The algorithm uh, can be saved via the save button, or you can save it as a different file name via the save as, and those both take you to a, a browse dialog. If you have the latest version of MapInfo Pro, then you can publish the algorithm to MapInfo Pro. When you do that, it will save the algorithm to the MRD file, and then it will open that MRD file in MapInfo Pro in a new map as a raster. Now, MapInfo Pro knows how to render an algorithm. So there's no transfer of actual data, there's just transfer of the instructions for how to render um, that data. Uh, so once you bring it into MapInfo Pro, um, you can zoom in and pan around as you can here uh, in Pro Raster. That's specific to MapInfo Pro. For all other applications, you have to use the export option. Uh, and that will um, uh, do the same thing. It saves the MRD file. But then it, allow, it, it will allow you to export the rendered imagery out to a located image raster. So for example, I'll output here to a GeoTIFF. And then you can choose the color resolution, you can choose the extent that you want to uh, render and um, set um, the raster output resolution and so forth. So when you do that, you actually render the imagery. So then you have a located image which you can take into something like QGIS and display directly uh, without any further uh, modification. Finally, let's just take a quick look at where all the resources uh, are saved. So if you have a look in program data on your hard disk, you'll see an RGE directory, that stands for Roberts Geospatial Engineering. And in here you'll see color tables, there'll be directory for the particular applications that you've got installed, and there'll be um, .dat files, which are binary files, and these will contain um, the user resources that you've created, like raster sources and um, data conditioning filters and so forth. Um, alternatively, um, if you look under uh, users, under your name, in the app data directory, in the local directory, here you'll find uh, another RGE directory and the same kind of thing, there'll be these DAT files and so forth where resources get saved. So that's where they get saved onto your hard disk.